Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and we are going to do this lesson on proving things about segments and angles. So let's take a look. Over here, let's recall what we have in our notes. And from our notes, we know that when we do a proof, you always have to provide a reason or justification for each statement that you make. So you will see me more often than not make a T-chart, because a T-chart will help us remember that for everything I write down on the left side, which is my statements, I will have to write a reason on the right side. And then your statements need to follow some sort of logical order. And then once the conjecture is proved, we can call it a theorem. When writing a proof, uh, make sure you justify each step, like I said. Use symbols, abbreviations, that's okay. Um, remember, we start with the hypotheses, which is usually our given. So right here, this will be what we are given. And our conclusion is what we are trying to prove. And then this is all our work in between. So that's the basics of how to write a proof. Now let's do some examples of doing proofs. So let's start with these. On this first one, we are told that we are given the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. So we know that this angle 1 is equal to angle 3. We are to prove that the measure of angle D, E, G is equal to H, E, F. So D, E, G would be this full one like this, and H, E, F would be this one like that. All right, well, let's see what we can do. I'm going to start and I'm going to do my t-chart. I will put in my statements and my reasons. And I always start with the given. So the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3, and this is the given. This is where I want to end up. This should be my last statement, which is the proof. Okay, let's see what we have in between here. All right, I'm given the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. Well, how about I try something tricky like this? If I add up to see what DEG is, DEG, it's made up of angle 1 plus angle 2. HEF is made up of angle 2 plus angle 3. So let's write some things in here. We're going to say that... The measure of angle DEG, and the reason I thought about that, to use DEG, is because I'm trying to prove something about DEG, and I'm trying to prove something about HEF. This equals the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. And this was angle addition postulate. Now, I could put this next statement as step number three, or I can put it as part of step number two, and I'm going to choose to put it as part of step number two. This is equal to the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three. And I chose to keep it as part of step number two because it's the same exact reason. It's the angle addition postulate. You could have put it as its own step three and step three and put the reason angle addition postulate again. But I chose to keep it right here just for that, just for that reason. Because it has the same reason. All right, let's continue on. Now let's look at what I was given again. Angle one is congruent to angle, or angle one equals angle three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, since these two are equal, I'm going to put angle 3 right in here. I should have used a different color. I'm going to put angle 3 right in there. So let's do that. So that means the measure of angle DEG equals <clears throat> the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2. And this was substitution. Substitution. Now, here's where things get a little tricky. Some teachers may, and some books will say, okay, now you got to flip those around and say symmetric. 
And we're not going to do that. I just want you to know the basics of the proofs. And so we're not going to get all technical with these proofs. So, but here's what I want you to notice. DEG now is angle 2 and angle 3. That's what it's made up of. HEF is also made up of angle 2 and angle 3. So these two are the same. <clears throat> so now, and here's again where you can get technical. You'd have to say, if this equals that, if this equals that. So if that means I can use a transitive property. So again, you can get technical, and some teachers will want you to be technical and write it the correct way. But I just want you to realize, since these two are the same, you can use the transitive property on this. So this is saying, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. That's how we're saying that. So we are going to say at this point that the measure of angle DEG is equal to the measure of angle HEF, and this was the transitive property. And now I'm done with the proof. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Over here, this is similar, so you may want to pause it and see if you could do it on your own. And unpause, and I will do this. We've got our statements, we've got our reasons. Statement 1, we know that KP is equal to ST, and PR equals TV, and this was our given. So we need to prove that this KR <clears throat> is equal to SV. All right, so same kind of concept. What is KR made up of? Let's take a look. KR is made up of KP plus PR. And SV is made up of ST plus TV. But look what I know. I know that KP right here is ST, PR is TV. Let's make that substitution. So now I can say KR is made up of ST plus TV. Let me highlight to you, I substituted, oh, let's, why does it do that? I substituted this and this over here with that and that. And now we can conclude that, step four, oh, and this was uh, step two, haha, <laughs> I didn't put my reasons here. And this is why we do T-charts, to remind ourselves that we need to put the reasons. Step two was segment addition, postulate, and step three was a substitution step. So now with step four, KR will be equal to SV, and this was again a transitive step. All right, let's take a look at the next page and see how, what more proofs we have. So let's take a look at this next one. On this one, I am given that angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4. So angle 1 and angle 4 are the same. Angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 is what I have to prove. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let's see what we can do. You notice that 1 and 2 add up to be 180. 3 and 4 add up to be 180. Well, why don't we use those? So since they're both 180s, I might be able to set something. And since 1 is 4, that would mean these two have to be the same to keep that 180. So let's do that. Let's take that path. And so we'll set up our t-chart with the statements and reasons. And as always, we'll start with our given that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 4. And our reason is that this is our given. So then step 2, let's take a look at what we can do with this one. All right, we had said that the measure of angle 1 is uh, plus the measure of 
angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180. In that same reason, we can say the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180. And this was because they are a linear pair. So this time, even if I did a little substitution step right now and put 4 there, it still doesn't match here. I can't, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, and put 4 there, yeah. It still doesn't match, so I couldn't do that. So instead, I'm going to set these two equal to each other. So I'm going to say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. Since they both equal 180, this was a substitution step. Okay, now you could have said transitive here as well because again if a equals b and b equals c then a equals c we could have technically put it as that so let's see what i'm going to do at this point notice i'm i now i can put in this angle four so i'm going to say the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four Looks like I forgot to write the 2 right there. Okay, so this was a substitution step as well. Now look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something tricky. Both of these have the angle 4 on there, so I'm going to subtract angle 4 from each side. And I'm left with step 5, the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 3. And this was a subtraction step. So it kind of went about this one a little bit tricky here. All right, I kind of had to squeeze all that in. Didn't give me much room for the next one, but let's see if we can fit it in here. So on this one, we are told that AIO, or AOI, sorry, AOI is equal to EOU. And i got to prove that angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent. So let's start with the given, and then we can start by saying what angle AOI is made up of. So I'll make my T-chart, and I'm going to have to try to fit so much in here, so we'll see what we could do. And I'll put my statements, and I'll put my reasons, and statement 1 will be angle AOI is equal to the measure of angle EOU. And this was a given. So then, let's continue on with that, and we said that we're going to say that the measure of angle AOI equals the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. And I could do the same thing for EOU. The measure of angle EOU is equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3, and this was angle addition postulate again. All right, since I know that these two are equal to each other, I could set the parts equal by substitution. So this one is substitution because it's not A equals B and B equals C. So it's just flat out substitution. So I'm going to say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. And this was substitution again. And it was substitution because of the fact that these two are not the same things and neither are these two. Okay, but I knew these were equal. Since they were equal, I was able to set those two equal by direct substitution there. All right, so next step. Look at what they have in common. And I'm going to subtract that thing that they have in common. This measure of angle 2. Subtract it from each side. So then you will be left with, and I'm going to finish this right up over here. You'll be left with step 4, that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3. And that's what we're trying to solve. And this was by our subtraction step that we took. All right, these additional examples right here, I will save, and we could do these in class. These um, are good warm-up type things, but let's do this last proof down here together. 
in, in the video, and let's see. All right, over here we have the angle QPS is congruent. So angle QPS, this one, is congruent to TPR. TPR. So this is just like almost like the one we've done before. And then we need to prove that QPR, QPR, is congruent to TPS. Okay, so let's put in our given angle. And I'm this one is good because they get a little bit formal in this. So I will uh, explain that form, those formalities that I, that the ones above did not have. And this was a given. Now we're going to say the measure of angle P, QPS is equal. This is by definition of congruence. So when we go from congruence in angles, so if I say angle is congruent to angle, and I go from the measure angle equal to the measure of angle, and vice versa, if I did it from this to this or this direction, this is always going to be definition of congruent. And yes, we need to be specific when we do this in these proofs, and that's why the ones above didn't say congruent. They said equal, so we didn't have to worry about that. So now we've got this where QPS is made up of these two and NPR. So this was the angle addition postulate, right? Because QPS is made up of QPR and RPS right here and the other way around. So then what we're doing in this next step is that we're going to set this, oops, the measure of angle since these two are the same, QPR plus the measure of angle RPS equals the measure of angle TPS plus the measure of angle RPS, which was our substitution step. Now we're going to do the subtraction. So we're going to subtract these that they have in common, and what they have in common on each side is this RPS, right? And so we will subtract that out. And after we subtract that out, we'll be left with the measure of angle QPR equals the measure of angle TPR. And this was subtraction. And then, again, when we go from equal to congruence, because they want us to say congruence, we could say angle QPR is congruent to angle TPR. And this is by definition of Congruent. All right, so that's what uh, we have here for these proofs. Um, these proofs, again, are dealing with angles and segments. Hopefully they weren't too bad for you. So thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.